Good afternoon, YouTube. Wanted to put this video together to share some of the tips and tricks I ran into installing the DVB Link TV server on my Synology Disk Station or NAS network attached storage device. So, this is the DVB Link server version 6, which I have over here. And this is running on my Synology, the latest version. Everything's uh, registered and up and running. I showed you that in the last video. And here's some information on my disk station here. So it's a model DS1513 Plus, has an Intel Atom D2700 CPU, 2.13 gigahertz, two cores, and four gigs of memory. And that'll be important. I'll try to cover that in another video on transcoding because this right here affects your ability to do transcoding on your NAS. And I'm running the latest version, DSM 6.0. And that's also important if you want to try to run DVB Link and any of the Synology media server applications. So if you are using your NAS as a media server, the disk station includes these applications here. There's an audio station for your music, photo station for photos, and there's also a video station for videos. And then they have this media server application that sits on top of these and handles the DLNA or streaming settings. So you can uh, choose what to do with different uh, audio formats and and change your, your configuration of that uh, server. One of those applications is this video station. You can have playlists, you can have your movie library, you can have TV show library. So this is TV shows that you would have say uh, ripped off of a DVD. Perhaps you purchased the Lost in Space DVD library, had season one, season two, season three, and you could rip those off the DVD, put them on your NAS, and then access them with a uh, full title, a synopsis, cast and crew, original broadcast date, ratings, and all of this comes off of, uh, I think it's IMDB. You can also have your home video and you could have TV recordings here. The video station application does do digital TV. They call it DTV. You can have a recording folder, you can have TV guide listings, and you can scan your, your tuners and they support DVB-T, which is your terrestrial or over the air channels and DVB-S, which are your satellite channels. But this applies to countries that use that video format. A lot of the countries in Europe use that. If you're in the US where we have ATSC, instead of DVB-T, this stuff doesn't work. It will come in and grab the HD home run tuners if you have some network tuners on your network, and you'll get something pretty much like this. You can get a tuner, show you what the name of the channel is, and if you click on that, it'll pop up a VLC window and play the live video off the tuner, but there's no program guide there. It's pretty primitive. So that's why I wanted to add the DVB link server to control the live TV and, and program guide information and have a usable system. So in order to get both of these uh, DVB link and video station to coexist, you have to come down here to advanced and disable the video station DTV function. You just need to turn that off. The other option is you can uninstall the video station app, load DVB link server, and then reinstall video station and it will automatically turn off the DTV function. This 
feature was, I think, only added in DSM-6. So you need to have the latest disk station manager to get this to work. So that's one of the tricks you have to do to get these to coexist. The other one is, you'll notice, TV recording folder or library doesn't work. You can't access anything that's in, in the TV recording folder, so you would need to make a new library, and you can point that to your DVB link recorded TV folder. So here's the DVB link library, and I set it to recorded TV. And if you want to look at the settings, there's the folder, library, and you do not want to enable video information search because the recorded TV programs don't have any metadata with them. And we can look at that here. If I look at, say, Gilligan's Island, it's got the name, series name, and episode name off of the recording. That's what I set up in DVB Link. But there's nothing else here. There's no synopsis. There's no series and episode. There's no metadata with this. It's just the file name, the date it was recorded. Everything's in one folder, so you can't really group series or anything. It's, it's pretty primitive, but it's usable. I mean, you can watch programs. But DVB link viewer or web browser is much better at that. You, you can sort by series. You want to go look at Batman or you want to look at Gilligan's Island. It can sort all those out. You've got much richer metadata. So you have all of that uh, here. Yeah, so anyway, if you're using the DVB link, you get the much better live and recorded TV support. You have your program guide, you have your channels with names and icons and all that uh, information. You can set up recordings. Here's my current recording schedule. I could modify these. I could add new recordings, all that stuff. You can't do that with the Synology video station. It doesn't have any of that capability, at least again in North America. So anyway, that is the DVB link server running on a Synology NAS. In the next video, I'll touch on transcoding and some of the other issues that are a little bit different if you're running on a NAS versus running on a PC. There are some differences and you have to be aware of those because they're not obvious and until you try it you won't know uh, if they're a, an issue or not. So I want to try to show you some of that uh, in the next video. So stay tuned if you have any questions about uh, just setting up DVB link on Synology. Uh, post up in the comment section below the video description. I'll put links to all of these uh, products in the video description as well. So you can check there for more information. And as always, thanks for watching.